These days, you don't have to buy one sporty car for fun and another practical car for driving around with your family. The proliferation of high-performance SUVs mean you can get all of those virtues in one vehicle. And if you're gonna buy a high-horsepower SUV, well, why not buy one with a ridiculous amount of horsepower? This is the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. It's got the 707 horsepower supercharged V8 engine from a Charger or Challenger Hellcat, but it's still a normal SUV. It can seat five people, fit a bunch of stuff in the back, tow more than 7,000 pounds. So you get all your performance and your utility in one vehicle. What's not to like about that? How does it look? The Grand Cherokee is a handsome SUV, and that carries over to this performance-oriented Trackhawk. This model actually is something of a sleeper because its diamond black crystal paint kind of hides the many functional vents, inlets, and cooling ducts that are all critical to the Trackhawk's performance. But you still have the big exhausts, the big wheels, and those yellow-painted Brembo brakes to signal that this is something special. How's the storage? This is another solid argument for picking the Trackhawk instead of a Dodge Challenger Hellcat, cargo space. Like all Grand Cherokees, it's got a roomy trunk, 36.3 cubic feet of space before you fold down the back seats and 68 cubic feet once you do. So if you're taking the whole family on vacation, well, you're gonna have plenty of space for your suitcases, as we will now demonstrate. While there isn't much room at all in the center console compartment, you can store other small items up front ahead of the shifter. In addition to two cup holders in the center console, you'll find a little bit more beverage storage in the door pockets. Is it roomy? There's a ton of room up front for the driver and passenger, with lots of headroom if you want to sit up high, and lots of horizontal space if you don't want to bump elbows with your passenger. The back seat, too, is more than spacious enough for adult passengers who'll be able to get comfortable without issue. How does the interior feel? The Jeep Trackhawk has a lot of nice materials in here. Now, yes, some parts like these switches are recognizable from the very lowest trim levels, but what I appreciate is that this one does feel special from the leather wrapped steering wheel, the carbon fiber and leather trim on the dash, and of course these bolstered lovely red leather seats. Is it well equipped? The Trackhawk comes pretty well equipped from the outset with features like heated and cooled front seats, heated rear seats, active safety technology like pre-collision braking and lane keeping assist, an 8.4 inch touchscreen, leather seating, and carbon fiber trim. To that, this tester adds even more goodies, including a rear seat DVD player for the kids, a big sunroof, and a 19 speaker sound system. And to compensate for its 180 mile per hour top speed, the Trackhawk comes standard with the largest brakes that Jeep has ever put on a production model. Up front, that means 15.75 inch Brembo discs with six piston fixed calipers, while out back, you'll find 13.8 inch rotors squeezed by a four piston fixed caliper. How's the infotainment system? Uconnect is one of my favorite infotainment systems because it just plain works. The on-screen graphics, texts, and buttons are all large enough that you can read them and operate them at a glance, and everything is organized neatly into various pages of information. There's support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto too, if you don't like the built-in features. Being an SRT model, this Trackhawk also has a handful of performance-focused menus, like ones for tweaking the launch control options or for monitoring engine data. Is it a good daily driver? I think there's a pretty compelling argument for using something like this as your daily driver and the fact that it is an SUV so there's more space and a little bit more comfort than the Challenger and Charger Hellcat models. With all-wheel drive you could drive it all year round with the right tires, you could drive it through winter, there's even a snow mode here, there's a tow mode. As performance machines go, I think this one is pretty civilized to use as a daily driver, but yes, definitely if you're used to driving a Grand Cherokee Overland, this one's a little stiffer, a little louder, and so on and so forth. Is it fun to drive? Well, 
it sure is fast. If you missed it earlier, this has 707 horsepower from the same supercharged 6.2 liter V8 you'll find in that Challenger and Charger. It comes with 645 pound-feet of torque. And if you push this launch control button, you'll get to 60 in three and a half seconds. That's quicker than the Audi RS5 Sports Coupe I drove last week. And that's from a vehicle that weighs more than 5,300 pounds. It's a really impressive achievement. And now a big part of the reason you can accelerate so quickly in something so big and heavy with all that power is having all-wheel drive, the regular Challenger and Charger Hellcat. You're sort of constantly fighting for grip and scrabbling to get those rear tires to hook up. But what's great about this is having all-wheel drive means that for better or for worse, you can really put the power down anytime, anywhere, and it will have grip. It's kind of easy to get addicted to accelerating constantly even when you don't need to in this car because the engine sounds incredible. You get this great supercharger wine up front, this bellowing and crackling from behind. It's a really exciting muscle car sound. And there is so much torque all the time the second you nudge your toe on the throttle that, well, passing and driving just becomes like warping space and time. If you see a gap in traffic and you want to be there, you just are there instantly. We've also got massive Brembo brakes at every corner to slow things down. Like a lot of other SRT cars that have Brembo brakes, the tuning is really, really nice. The pedal isn't too grabby when I'm driving around in the city, but when I'm driving enthusiastically, it's nice and firm and easy to modulate. I think it would be pretty easy for somebody to assume that something like the Trackhawk is going to be all about straight line power and not about any sort of composure or precision or excitement in cornering and braking, and that's not true. What impresses me most about this thing is that, yes, obviously it's crazy fun when I put my foot down and unleash all those horsepower, but it's just a really well-rounded performance SUV no matter what you're doing. How's the fuel economy? You might not be surprised to discover that a supercharged SUV is not exactly a green machine. The EPA rates the Trackhawk for 11 miles per gallon city and 17 mpg highway, a fair bit worse than the Challenger and Charger Hellcat models. So far since we've had it, we've been averaging 10 mpg in this truck. How much is it? The Grand Cherokee Trackhawk starts at $86,000 and this test car is just shy of $100,000. Yes, a 100 grand Jeep sounds expensive, but let's remember that this thing can outrun a Porsche Cayenne Turbo S for way less money. So that's what you're paying. What are the negatives? Oh, the Trackhawk isn't a practical purchase necessarily. It's expensive, it's thirsty, it's loud, it's stiffer riding than a regular Grand Cherokee. And look, if you want performance, many people might find the 475 horsepower Grand Cherokee SRT is plenty of grunt. But then again, this one does have 707 horsepower, so it's pretty appealing just based on that. Who should buy it? When you just have to have the absolute best, well, this is it. The Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk is a super awesome, stupid fast toy that'll make your friends jealous and your kids car sick. No, it's not a rational purchase, but it's an awesome one, and you are gonna have an absolute blast behind the wheel.